This is, um, <clears throat> okay, this is a ridiculous example um, that, that follows it. So, uh, you don't have to be a fan of this, but so we're going to, a random point in the universe, so what's the, what's the force of gravity there, right? Which usually we shouldn't have to worry about this. Some people, at least in stories, might have to. Uh, and so it has a bit of a funny, it, it's a minus five halves uh, scaling, right? So probably that the force of gravity is F is scaling at minus five halves, which is between two and three, right? This is two and a half, between two and three. So most of the time nothing happens. So if your machine isn't working well, you end up in some random part of the universe. Most of the time, okay. Now and then very bad things happen because you put yourself next to a you know, black hole or a sun. Um, okay, and so you can, you can kind of derive this actually. And this is a paper from the 1910s. Uh, and you have to think about what would happen. So further, so, so imagine the stars are basically you know, all over the place, but somewhat random. And if you're near one, then uh, this is, if you're randomly locating yourself near a star, then this is the probably that your distance r, right? So you're randomly locating in space, then probably that your this distance is, is growing like the, the shell, the shell, the surface area, of a shell around the star. So, you know, whatever, this is fine. We're, we're being very rough here. Um, and so it's distributed enough that there's all this gap in between, we don't have to worry about it. Um, and then the law of gravity, we know that it scales is out of the minus two, which took a lot of thinking, right? So one of our monks um, called Newton made all these mistakes about this, but then got it right. So, uh, so invert that, so now we have r is proportional to f to the minus a half, and we can do the same little calculation, right? We want a probability of force, we have a connection between them, uh, and we have a probability of, of being at a radius. So if you do those things, so the differentials are easy, so this is dr, differentiating this thing, we're gonna get an f to the minus three halves, some constants, but that's all we need. So we'll put those things in there. So we have, that's the connection between the variables. This is our differential, and this is the probability distribution that we know about. So that's the connection, we, you know, we just explicitly connect them, and um, we're gonna replace everything we have in here with uh, r, right? So r is f to the minus a half, there's some constant here. There's f to the minus three halves df, pops out. So if you just go through these pieces, right, this is uh, probably of r is, um, yeah, like r squared, right? So this is this blob squared, so we've got an f to the minus one, and there's an f to the minus three halves, so that adds up to f to the minus five halves. Very silly thing, but um, I mean, hopefully we don't have to worry about it. But just a fun example. So lots of pieces like that. And uh, it will be, you'll see how dimensions play in, so when we think about something like forest fires, then we're talking about one dimensional boundaries trying to block them off if we think about um, fire breaks, right? So there's the two dimensions of the forest and the one dimension of the breaks will have, you know, they'll really feed into what these exponents can be. And of course it'd be two dimensional surfaces kind of blockading things in three dimensions and so on. Okay, right, mean is finite, variance is infinite, so it's a wild distribution, so if you randomly jump around in space, it's usually okay, but it can go very, 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 very wrong. All right, so that's good.